A nigga laying down with a woman, making sure he ain't shooting his c**t off in anybody, homie. Before he find out who she is. Same with a woman, letting this nigga c**t off in her. Nigga, we done been tricked and believed that chasing that c**t, pushing that c**t up out that c**t make you a hell of a man. They done talked to black boy to believe, boy, if you can fuck all it. And man, it, it, it really lowers your value as a man. And when a man show up and all the women in the village say, oh, girl, I done fucked him. Oh, girl, he don't want nothing but some pussy. Nigga, your value is as low as a penny. When all the women know you done been with all the other women, yeah, it ain't no mystique about you. Yeah, nigga, King can't fuck everybody. He's selective about who he go fuck. The average black man don't have a King mindset, nigga. He fuck things he don't even like. She catching him cheating. They still fucking. He have a baby somewhere else. Now she put his ass on child support. She young and immature in her fitting. Done caught her cheating with your best friend. Now you can't see the baby, nigga. He got another baby over here. So that's normally the role niggas play, huh? So where does it start? With the nigga? Nigga, you? Hey, this is facts. This is straight facts. The order is this. God, Christ, man, woman, child. What does that mean? The creator of all things, the spirit and the mind behind all of this. His son, his word, right? And then you, the man, you supposed to be the embodiment of those things you made in his image. You supposed to bring God on earth, right? He already did it through his creation, but within you in the human species, it's your job to act out the word of God and to be young and disciplined. To bring wisdom upon the earth and get the family in order with your woman and your kids. Structure your life, your house first. And then the woman come in, you structure that. And the kids, and the, you see what I'm saying, follow suit after that. Let me read this to y'all. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He won't stop until he die. Unfortunately, our brother Kevin Samuels, he passed away. Last story I heard, chasing ass. Is that how you want to go out? I don't think that's really honorable, man. This dude was 50-some years old. Uh, and as much as he did good things for people, and I'm not saying this judging because y'all know I done did a whole list of bad stuff, right? But what I'm trying to do is preach a message for you guys to do more. Just think about this. Kevin went out with some big booty nurse or something. That That's what he went out smashing. He smashed that and then had a heart attack. This is a grown man, by the way. He done lived over half a century, and he's still just hooking up and just doing that. Y'all got to be smart, man, where you putting your dick, where, where you putting your, you see what I'm saying? Because if you don't, you'll have a kid with some girl. She'll screw that kid's mind up and screw you up. You won't have no access to your seed, and she'll teach them all types of things. That's horrible, all because you picked the wrong ground to plant in. You got to think about this shit, y'all. Y'all got to think about this. Should I grow a beard, or should I just leave it shaved, clean shaved? Bro, your, first of all, your forehead is huge. Oh, God. You're African. His shit. <laughs> And I got a big forehead, nigga, but Woo! this nigga got a big ass forehead, cuz. I'm African. I have the same issue. When you have. Nah, a, nah, you don't. <laughs> you don't, nigga. Bigger forehead. A low haircut is not going to make your facial aesthetics better. I'm telling y'all, oh, this is why I shit do my hair. You motherfuckers don't know the difference between male gaze and female gaze. The thirds of your face right now, your forehead is taking the majority of your face. So I seriously recommend growing out your hair. Put put your hand right here, bro. Oh, come on. Don't do yeah. it. Oh. Look out for your hey, hey, he a nice guy because he laughs. So this just from there to there, this nigga could this nigga got like a six head, bro. Six god head. Hairline is from your fing forehead. Right. That's I'm gonna go ahead and grow my hair. Okay, there's a lot to unpack right there, but I'm gonna just keep it real short and simple so we can get to the main event. Uh, I think your looks is very important, guys, in the data market. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all see me. I get on this shit dusty as shit most of the time, right? Uh, but that's because I ain't trying to seduce you niggas. I don't, I, ain't, I'm not, I, don't, I don't care about the male gaze, right? He right. It's about the female gaze. What do females find attractive? I do think Fit X grilled the fuck out of him, though. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> he, he told that nigga to put a finger on his shit, bro. Damn, my shit ain't that much better. Hold on, hold on. Three, four. I mean, yeah, I could fit four. So that's a forehead, right? But my shit still don't look that great though. But hey, you know what I'm saying? What y'all think about that type shit? Is that is that bad or is that good advice? All right. Hello? What's going on? How are you? How old are you? Me? I'm 28. All right. What's the disagreement? Um, I don't feel um, even if black men reach the certain level that they're uh that we should aspire to reach, I don't think uh the black women will follow us. I feel like 80% of them will still shit on us and uh, leave us yep. hanging. Why? First of all, 
You said I feel twice. See any issue with that? No. That's a problem. As a man, you shouldn't worry about how you feel. So I will think in what we do. It's one of the things we talk about women all the time. They always say, I feel, I feel, I feel. I think takes like this can be a little bit silly. However, I, I do think there's merit to it and I can see the validity in his statement. Uh, this guy is speaking from a perspective, at least as far as I can see it, of he has had some negative experiences with women and it has impacted his emotions. And because of that, when he's thinking about a woman submitting to him and how and, and men in general and the type of men he identifies with, he don't think that it would happen. I beg to differ. I do think that if a lot more men or all men actually stood up and did the right thing, they would fall in line. The main issue that I see in this world today and the, and the issues, y'all, is the fact that the laws are kind of against us, but the men made the laws. So I actually look at it like this. I think uh, what in stepping up and being a man, 100 percent black man, what that would entail would be us having our own laws, our own country and our own shit that we enforced. Right. Or even men as a whole, it would be changing the laws. And unfortunately, that means some things would probably go back to how things used to be before the feminism movement. Obviously, I do think we should be able to learn and see that there should be some checks and balances with maybe some of the treatment of women, you know, compared to what we had before. So they don't look at it like they just held down in like a negative way because that's kind of what sparked that rebellion. But I also think we went too far with the giving in to all of that. And now we done made it a woman's world and we see what that does in our communities. Almost 80 percent of the households is destroyed. They, they, they ran by women. And, you know, obviously, I do think that's men's fault for not being in the house. Right. And for allowing things to get this far. But what I'm trying to highlight is the fact that when you let women steer the ship, it, it, it we're going to crash. You see what I'm saying? We're going to crash. Like they, they're not meant to be the head of the household. They're not meant to be the ones trying to raise the boys and the daughters on their own. All they do is all they do is pass down their negative mindset and their bad traits to the daughters. And all they do is create weak boy create weak men right and then they turn around and they create them and then they complain about them you know and i do think it comes down to them not wanting to submit but i also think is that men are not leaders that demand respect see fuck trying to set it up so a woman can just respect you know want you know want to choose it should you should play on her you you should be so in tune with your masculinity to the point where when you deal with girls a lot of them just want to do it like they, they they cannot do anything else but feel like they have to because when you in line like this with your and you in alignment with your with your higher self and the way that the world was structured on the principle level of it is she ain't gonna be able to do nothing but want to submit that's that's all you're gonna do you're playing on her biology you know so I, I i but i do also think there will still be women that's far too gone and headstrong and they wouldn't want to but what i would say is don't deal with those women don't deal with them. And over time, the, the population would see the women that get men and get the happy life and all of that stuff will be the ones who submit and the ones that don't get it. And they get homelessness and they get bitterness and they get loneliness and and, and are ostracized would be the ones who who don't submit. So if you set it up in this type of way over time, I think things would start to rebalance themselves out. I think men giving women all that validation and sympathy for them, all of this different stuff is what's causing this issue ultimately. Although I do think the women play a part in it. I hope I articulated that in a way that y'all understand. So what makes black women biologically different than any other group of women? Biologically? Yes. Nothing. There is no difference. Then why, not from not a biological to, then why would they not respond to the same evolutionary biology type things? Mm, yep. From what I've seen from anecdotal experience, uh, it's like it's it's a temporary it's a temporary con it's a temporary uh, Wait, what part reaction. Where do you live in? I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yes, sir. So why does the divorce rate drop dramatically for black couples as well over an income of two hundred fifty thousand dollars? I didn't know that. Maybe because you're not part of that group. He just grilled his ass. Silent cook.
stupid. This See, if you're going to say though. something like that, I'm going to challenge it. Because basically what you're putting For out sure. here is you don't feel black women are going to, okay, I'll go with that. But why? Based upon what? It's uh, it's what I've seen my entire life. You know, they're 20 black women have old. been my enemy my entire life. They've been your what? My enemy. What do you mean your enemy? Um, um, whether it's me, whether it's people that I know or people that I'm even related to, uh, if there are strides towards uh, success that are being made, um, there's an active effort to uh, get in the way of the progress of what it is that we're doing. Like, honestly, like, what does that mean, though? You got. You come in and say black women have been my enemy. You're gonna to have to give me a specific. Okay. Yeah, there you go, man. I'm trying to try I recently uh dated a woman who uh was pursuing a dual doctorate degree in medicine and in chemistry. I'm and, a PhD. Uh, throughout the entire relationship, uh <laughs> throughout the entire relationship, the only time that we didn't have um uh, an argument or we didn't have any kind of ridiculous back and forth is when we were having sex. You know what I'm saying? Like once the you? orgasm was out, how old are you? 28. And how long? 28. You I've known her for eight years, dated her for one. And you dated her to what end? What was the, what was the intended outcome? To what end? To what end? Yeah. Dating um, has a purpose. I was, uh, I was looking, um, I was looking, uh, I was interested in marrying her. You were dated her for with sure. the, okay. And what do you do for a living? I'm a musician and an Uber driver. What? I know. Are you serious? Are you trolling me? Ninja no, what? No, I'm not. Ninja what? You date, your enemy is your pocketbook. Yeah. I know. Nah, brother. You can't say I know after you just said it was black women. Um, at the end of the day, man, a woman gonna respect a man who respect himself. If you pushing thirty, bro, and you talking about yo, you a Uber driver and your aspirations to be a musician, I'm not saying you can't do that or achieve that, but let's just look at the odds here, my brother. For one, Uber driver is not the most stable job, right? It's like a, to me, I always looked at it like it's a side hustle, and or if you got other money that's already coming in consistently, musician is not a stable job whatsoever. Um, or at least a high earning. Now, you can make it like that, but nobody knows who this brother is. We know he ain't probably out there hitting the road uh, just to see how he take care of himself, you know, and I ain't gonna get on his grooming because he on here talking to a man. It's just him in his house, um, but I could tell he got higher body fat percentage. Um, I saw his teeth and different stuff like that's gonna definitely lower his SMV when he's trying to attract women and stuff, and then your pockets ain't good, and he admitted, too, that his pocketbook ain't good, so he ain't really doing too well for himself. So how can we say women is the enemy when it's women are biologically, pro, you know, programmed to want a provider? That's evolutionary what our role is. We provide the resources. Back in the days, we would hunt. We would be the hunters. Women don't have the physical brute strength to go out and hunt and the, and, the, and the speed and all that stuff like how we do. We would make the tools and we go out and hunt. The women, they, 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 they the home takers, right? They, they, and the homemakers, they take care of the home. They raise the kids. You know, they, they fulfill the man's needs in different, you know, sexual, you know, type of ways and stuff. And they can be a helpmate to you, right? She can cook the food that you that you hunted and you got. She can help with tools and she can help make sure the clothes and the armor and everything is tight. She can help you, but you the top dog. So she ain't a lot of the women that he dealing with. And if you're dealing with this, too, a lot of they complaining and bitching come from the fact that they wish you would just do your part. You know, and there's a balance to it. You can do your part and have a woman that's still bitch. But my thing is this. If you sitting there arguing with her, what's that make you? If she a bitch because she arguing with her, what's that make you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't like that, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like that, do you? So maybe if you didn't stoop down to her level and you knew how to guide the interaction and control the dynamic and the energy, you would make her level up to your level. And now that arguing will go out the door and there'll be mature conversations and her submitting to you. But if she can't respect you, it's going to be hard for her to do that. Don't come in and talk about black women. As your, man, see? I mean, are you being serious, bro? Um, I am, but the finances is definitely something no, that no, I'm No, no, no. Oh, hell no, no. A black woman who's dating, doing... You you actually came in here to tell me that you dated a black woman who's pursuing two dual doctorates. I'm a PhD. 
and you're a goddamn yeah. Uber driver and a musician. That's not a problem, except you frame black women as your enemy, and your enemy is your inability to be productive on a serious level. That's not currently true for me. Well, here's the thing. I talked about what makes black women different on an evolutionary biological scale than any other group of women. You could not say that. I asked you about the decrease in the marital, the, the, the divorce rates over a quarter of a million dollars for a couple. You didn't know about that. You said from your anecdotal experience, but unless you make that, your anecdotal experience has been to respect yours. Well, so, okay, so outside of me, I have mentors that uh, I work with. My ultimate point is at 28 that. years old, you're too young to be trying to talk about getting married anyway. See, you haven't found yourself. Yeah. And if I go with what you said, your failure and relationships are justified by calling black women your enemy instead of looking in the mirror and saying, where am I at? Mm. I do where that every day. And why? So why are you putting anything on women? This is why I tell y'all, man, I made videos like this, but y'all don't want to click on these because it's not about chasing ass. But the problem that y'all have is just that. Um, if you should not be in no committed relationship with no woman, you should not be married or, or trying to settle down and all of this stuff that y'all looking to do and acting on your urges if you don't have the discipline to have priority straight before you act on those urges what do i mean by that you should be have your business successful you should have your career already going you should have stability when it comes to your bank account you should have stability when it comes to your financial knowledge, are you even invested in anything? I mean, I'm not even talking about no crazy index funds or, you know, stock market. It could just be as simple as 401k, it could, Roth RIA. You know what I'm saying? Do you even know about that stuff? Do you do you have that? Do you know what your plan would be for your family? Do you do, are you consistent in your religion that you say you follow? Oh, you an atheist? Okay, cool. But what about your principles and your morality that you stand on? Do you actually have the outline concisely what you believe and what you don't? Do you know how you will want your woman? Uh, what you want her to do in your life oh i want her to cook and clean uh clean what what type of house y'all gonna have you know what i'm saying do you even got your own crib right now can you even afford that do you even know what it's like to to to, to be able to buy a home or 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 pay a mortgage or whatever do you even have the knowledge about these things or are you just gonna wing it you know what i'm saying uh oh i wanted to i wanted to cook what what is she gonna cook what's the content of the food you eat out every day and you eat mcdonald's all the time you see what I'm saying? What you going to have her cook? McDonald's burgers in the house, nigga? Do you know what type of diet you have? Do, what, what type of diet? Do you know what foods are good for your body and for hers and for your children? What you mean you want her to cook? You don't even know what type of food you want her to cook. You just going to be eating soul food every day and wonder why you got high blood pressure and issues because you sitting over there eating that damn fried chicken and them damn mac and cheese every day. Yeah, you can have some mac and cheese here and there, bro. But to be honest, y'all should be eating healthy diets. Do you even have a hot, do you even understand the food groups that's necessary? Or do you just go off of the little plate picture that they showed you in kindergarten? Nigga? <laughs> you don't even know. Have you proved and tested these things? What about your workout schedule? How, is your girl going to do that? What's the order and the rules that's going to be set up between you and your woman? What's the dynamic like? Who's going to do this and who's going to do that? What's assigned here? Y'all don't think about none of this. Y'all just want to jump in shit off of feelings because you want to get that nut off. You feel what I'm saying? So... You got to find yourself. You got to build yourself up. You got to you got to experience more life. You need to be out here grinding, chasing the bag, improving yourself as a man, building character, facing challenges, not being afraid of adversity, embracing it and accepting it, growing. You see what I'm saying? And you damn sure should not have no body fat percentage that's high like this. You know what I'm saying? All of these different things. So how is it that you want a woman to come into this and submit and you mad at her for not wanting to, but your self-direction is off? You got to build your aura, brother. You got to have some substance. You see? So you can't have no issue with black women. And then you want to settle down and get a girl and you don't have none of this shit worked out. Your priorities is fucked up, my boy. And, and why? What makes you said you were looking at her to be a, a, a wife, possibly. What makes you a husband? Mm. Outside from what standpoint? Can you provide for a family? Not yet. No. Then then bro, then then you were dating this woman with the eye to marry her and you couldn't even provide for a family. And this is just talking about the financial, but check this, provision and providing, right? I'm sorry, not provision, but providing goes deeper than just financial, guys. I had to learn this. I've been making six figures. I told y'all it's about to be three years now. 
Yeah, and still, yeah, I was able to provide for my family that I had. When I was married and I had a wife and we had our little family and all that. Yeah, I was able to do that. But guys, there's other areas of providing that's necessary. Can you provide the proper emotional support? And beyond support, the guidance. Can you provide knowledge? Can you provide wisdom? Can you provide a path of direction so that she actually can be taken from her darkness that a lot of women be in? You know, it's not your job to fix nobody, but I want y'all to understand this. You still got to be able to lay out the path. You know what I'm saying? Just like you watching me to try to do better. I can't make you get better, but do you even have it laid out to where you can do what I'm doing for you? You can do this or what he did for women and men that you can do this with your woman. If you couldn't be a coach to your woman, you don't need to have no woman. If you still need help from a coach, like to this to that fullest extent, yeah, sometimes you got to counsel with people and get advice. That's normal. But I'm saying if every day or all the time you need people helping you to make decisions, especially other men overseeing this and you still, how do I do this and how I do that? Brother, to be honest, you so far from ever getting a woman and the best advice I can give you is get out here and get experience. Don't be a whole ass nigga hide in the house like a damn hermit because because pro providing goes beyond just the financial. There's provision. There's there's leadership. There's guidance in so many different ways from her mental state, her spiritual state, e her emotional state, where y'all literally going to go, what y'all going to do. The intimacy, intimacy side of things, the comfort side of things, the security side of things, the trust side of things, the knowledge and the elevation. You see what I'm saying? It, it's so much to it. Your problem isn't the women, man. The problem, see, this is the problem with too many of us as black men. We look to, we, we, we don't have power. We're not trying to be serious. I mean, no disrespect, but I, I'm tired of hearing black men who are musicians and rappers and, and producers and actors and massage therapists and Uber drivers mm -hmm. and chefs. Where's the trade? Mm -hmm. Where's the profession? Where's the real world something you walk into a chamber of commerce meeting with a business card and say this is who i am and what i do to where other men will take you seriously i agree if you're that. struggling i agree with that hands down guys trades is good to have it's good having a trade is good bro having uh you know uh, uh you know welding or being an electrician maintenance you know was that rhetorical or did you want me to respond no nah, i'm asking you because if you were to go into a chamber of commerce meeting on any on any given tuesday or thursday how many musician uber drivers do you think you'd meet that were non-black none all right none it's not where I plan on staying or what I'm working towards in the future. I get it. I get that. However, you were dating a woman who is heavily degreed and women respond to power. Unfortunately, she dwarfed you in power potential. So the only place you could dominate and show any power is in the bedroom because she did not have to take you seriously. You weren't on the same level. See, and this is why I can't allow to stand when you come in and saying black women are this or black women are that. Are you a competitive black man? Yes, I would say so. Competitive against who? Um, <laughs> against, uh, I guess, like people in my tax bracket. I, I don't want to stay here. I'm trying to get to the top 1%. Okay. Well, that's the main thing. Becoming a productive, competitive, successful man, men who are that way tend to have fewer problems because they have more leverage. Did you have that's any something problems? I realized watching your content? Well, so it's not black women. It's not women. You have little leverage in a relationship with a woman who's going to get two degrees. And I asked but what you, I'm saying, you said I was I asked you how long you know her? Eight years. I think this is something that's kind of neglected on the game side of things because you know, while I do think and there are guys who don't have a lot of money and all this stuff and they game girls and have girls bringing them money and stuff, and I do think having leverage in a relationship uh helps you a lot. And the leverage ain't gotta be about manipulating or holding nothing over a woman's head, but it's just the fact that you have so much to offer that what you want in return, she'll be more willing to do it because she's getting some sort of security and successful good benefit from it. You see what I'm saying? So 
you got to put in that work, y'all. That's just how it works. Women, you know, they just be born beautiful and they can get this, right? If they act right and stuff, they don't have to put in the same amount of work. But, man, you really got to put in blood, sweat, and tears to get to that type of place to where you get your pickings. I'm, I'm just keeping it real, bro. You've known her long enough to know who she is. But you still need to have conversation skills, social awareness, a social IQ. You need to know how to provide women with that feeling, masculine frame, seductive frame, escalation. You know, all of those different things I teach you guys, um, which are very, very important. You need all of it. That's what I would say. You want to have all of it. The more you got, the better and the less likely you're going to get any pushback, talk back. You're just going to be him. She is and what she's about. You said you were with her for one year. I said, to what end? You said to marriage, and you're not in a position to be a husband. You can't provide for a family. You shouldn't have been in a relationship. That's the ultimate answer. You shouldn't have been in a relationship. She should have been on out somewhere else, dealing with somebody who wanted what she wanted, but you are not in a position to deal with any women to that end. Casually, socially, sure. We're talking about a wife? Yeah. You can't provide. Um, okay, so that that goes against uh, stuff that you said previously. Because what I make um, currently right now is average income. Um, I average about forty five thousand a year. Goes against what I've said. Um, you're saying that uh, that in order for for someone to even consider marriage. Um, that they should be making in the top one percent, or no, at least that. When have I said threshold. that? When have I said that? Yeah, he he. Isn't it. that what you're saying right now? You're no, saying that no, because no, sir, that is not, is not, no, not no, no. You said you said it conflicts with what I said, and I ask you, what did I say? And you just said, well, aren't you saying in order to be married, you need to be in the top one percent? Do you understand? Uh, to be completely business? all right. Okay, uh, no, that's not what I'm I'm no, stop. no, 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 no. That's not what I said. That means that the only people who could get married are in the top 1%. I asked you, could you provide for a family? I didn't ask you how much money you made. Yeah, I asked you, you and you said, said no. no. Yeah. At 45000 I mean, it's not Then that's all much. you need to know. You shouldn't be looking to marry anybody if you can't provide. I told her that I needed time to build it up. It doesn't matter what you it. told her. You shouldn't have yeah. been with her. Okay. She was going for two... All right, man. See, he really more talking about guys. You got to be realistic with this stuff. I know you guys. You know what's left behind? Y and D. I can get any girl. I'm just confident in the motherfucker. Let's be real here, bro. There's category. There, there's hierarchies in all of this shit. There's guys that's more attractive than others, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's dudes that look better than me. I look better than some of y'all. I'm taller than some of y'all. I'm shorter than some of y'all. At the end of the day, what the fuck can I do about it? What can you do about it? Except maximize your potential and be realistic about your pickings. Yes, a girl that getting degrees and stuff, that don't mean you can't be with a girl who getting a degree and you don't have one or she getting two degrees or something. But he basically saying, just be realistic about what you going into. That's how I would say it. I ain't gonna say you shouldn't be with her, guaranteed. But if your outcome is his, you definitely shouldn't. But, you know, you just got to be realistic. OK, she got a Ph.D. She doing this and that. And here I am as an Uber driver. Like. You know, don't that don't mean you got to act insecure, but I will go into it knowing like, OK, she might feel this sort of way and this is going to be how I have to move. And if she end up looking at it like you ain't enough for doing what I want, I got to accept it, smack the shit out of myself with this. But you just got to accept it. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So you got to be realistic. We have a problem. If you pick a woman who's going to school and getting dual doctorates and you're an Uber driver and a musician, you're unequally yoked, man. You know that. And if you wanted her to wait on your potential, I think you're too young to be worried about any of this stuff anyway. And what I'm hearing is a lack of maturity because you haven't got there yet. And that's all he was saying. It's not that he has to have that type of money. He basically saying, brother, out of your own mouth, you said you're not fit to be a husband. So it don't matter how much you make. And if I think that could be good, 45000 it's the fact that you said it's not good and you ain't built up and you still struggling in your life to get yourself together. If, 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 her, if she had a father who was a productive, competitive, successful man, do you think he would have accepted you as an adequate son-in-law? Hell nah. No. Then what? Is, it's not about her. Exactly. I was saying black women in general. That was just the it's relationship. Not, no, no, but but we but see, you talk about black women in general, and just like with black women, I get specific. You can't talk about general if you can't handle it specifically in your life. 
And I agree with that. And also, too, his frame of thinking on his generalization of black women is going to be heavily influenced by his anecdotal day to day experience. That's why when he started off, see, he's trying to run now. He's doing what women do. This is him and his feminine energy instead of he taking it better than how women do, of course. But he's still kind of deflecting a little bit. A lot of us be our own worst enemies. Actually, I would go down and say this. All of us are our own worst enemies. You worried about Satan. You worried about women. You worried about him or her. Nigga, you Satan. You the damn devil that's destroying your life. It's you that's making bad choices. Stop trying to blame it on something all the time. Take responsibility. And this is something you got to do every day. I do this every day. The first thing I think about is where I, I went wrong or the bad choice I made. You know, and that don't mean I pardon other people's mistakes and I deal with other people's bullshit because I make mistakes. But what I'm saying is I look at where I went wrong. Right. As the scriptures say, die daily, you know, look in the mirror, you know, self-correcting and just being real with myself. And right now he running because just earlier, nigga, you said that you seen it in your family and women you dealt with. So now you saying you just talking in general. But the spec but the spe but the specific scenario shows that that's where you getting your generalizations from and why you fucking up. So just you can't come that. in and saying that about black women have been your enemy. How is that woman your enemy? I feel like despite the things that I want to do. How is that woman your enemy? Every, uh, I mean, throughout the entire relationship, man, it was you a teardown. You shouldn't have been in a French Coast relationship. I agree with you on that point. Take ownership and accountability for the fact that you shouldn't have been I trying do. to. No, you don't. I do. Coming in. Hey, Kevin said I got to go. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that say. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's probably not because I've heard that before, but in my head, I'm getting them conflated. But I've heard both of them. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. Make sure y'all taking accountability, man. Uh, it's so easy to point the finger at other people. It's so easy to point the finger at women and say, oh, it was women that did it. It was this and that. At the end of the day, a lot of times it be us, bro. It be us. You know, it's us. It's you. It's you that's doing it to yourself. It's you that's, that's causing these problems. It's you that's inviting them into your life. A lot of your life is what you make it, and it's your decision. Stop trying to blame other people and look in the mirror and accept accountability as a man. And when you do that and you reflect on your decisions and you learn from them and you do better, your life will get better and you'll see it's not that bad. It's all on us, bro. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all on the next one.